And that's why the elites themselves are having to run to out-of-the-way places and build armored fortresses to fight the policies they themselves schizophrenically brought in. And I'm not against the immigrants themselves. But I have no responsibility when somebody in North Africa or somebody in Nicaragua or somebody in Saudi Arabia or Turkey or wherever they're from wants to have seven kids and then they want to bring them here and then I'm supposed to go, oh, you're a foreign culture. I mean, I'm actually a worldly guy and I'm not proud of that. I am worldly. I kind of like other cultures and weird stuff and interesting people. I don't like run-of-the-mill basic you know, vanilla ice cream, one flavor. But man, I want to be able to do what I want and I don't want you telling me what to do. And this whole leftist garbage is about saying I'm bad because... I'm attracted to women of, of every color and creed, but I mean, I'll just be honest with you. Uh, I'm probably the most attractive on average to white women. And it's not because I'm racist. All the genetic studies show black people are more attracted on average to other black people. It's genetic. I can't say if it's blondes or brunettes. I mean, I can't really tell you. I just know that that's what I'm most attracted to. I see Asian women that are black women that are Hispanic women that are incredibly gorgeous. But at the it, deep down, I click and abs is that am I bad for being white? Peter Schiff of Euro Pacific Capital is going to be joining us here in just a moment. And coming up at the bottom of the hour, we'll open the phones up for your questions for Peter Schiff, who joins us every two weeks now to break down the ongoing global collapse. He predicted here a few months ago on air that by the fall, he expected to see a major unraveling. But he said, look, they can keep these uh, you know plates in the air or these balls they're juggling for a long time. It might go further. But he said it's, it's really starting to unravel. Well, now the Chinese have started dumping U.S. treasuries. They're continuing to drop their currency. We know they're propping up the U.S. stock market here. We're going to get his take on what he thinks is unfolding here in a moment, and, and then also his take on collapsing Africa, collapsing Middle East, collapsing areas of Asia, Eastern Europe in trouble, Russia in a depression, migrants, illegal aliens, pouring in, hundreds drowning a day coming out of Africa and the Middle East, uh, German towns of 1,000 people, now with 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 immigrants, uh, governments in Europe like Sweden saying we're going to start housing them in your house. I mean, you talk about political correctness, that will only bring more people. But people are so politically correct, they might even say, here's my wife, here's my daughter, to prove that you're not racist. Uh, this is over-the-top insane. I have another article here in the stack out of Canada where they're saying, free housing for Muslims but not for Christians. I'm not kidding, because in the political correctness, Muslims are downtrodden. So... They get free stuff. This is all the hate speech, political correctness stuff is really a way for communists and socialists to unevenly distribute socialist booty. And that always happens in collectivist regimes. It's selectively delivered. And they want the giant immigrant populations here, the good, the bad, the ugly. A lot of these immigrants are great people. I don't care if they're Muslim. I don't care if they're Christians from Mexico, whatever. You want to come here, work hard, prove it, become a citizen, we need you. We, hell, we killed, you know, uh, half the kids we were going to have in this country since Roe v. Wade. Black people, white people, Hispanics. So we need folks. I mean, we, we killed all our kids. I'm not against immigration, but you can't just have it wide open and say, come up here, we'll give you something free. Look at these headlines. Swedish MP, make people's garages into immigrant housing. New York Times, Germany small towns fill the cost of Europe's migrant crisis. AFP, on Lesbos Island, tourists uh, confronts clash with immigrant and, and migrant needs. There's 160,000 migrants just on that island. Migrant crisis, Greek ferry brings 2,500 to one port alone. And they just show up and say, everything's free. I'm here with my babies. Pay for it. In a country already collapsing. What are the socialists thinking? They're going to cause a revolution. They're going to bring in folks that are going to run the revolution for them to take over. I mean, it's the Cloward and Piven plan. This isn't a game.
So that's what we've got going on. Absolute treason taking place. Ferries being shut down in England. Trains being shut down. Because the illegals are now not just riding on the trains. They're now robbing the trains, robbing the ferries, robbing the trucks. And the police will do nothing. But it got so out of hand. You can go on YouTube and just type in uh, immigrants rob trucks in France getting on ferry, and it's just hundreds of videos of the robbing, the stealing. This is the collapse of society. And I know Peter will say, oh, well, it's the benign neglect, the elites don't care, they're in their ivory towers, they're stupid. But the Ford Foundation, Acorn, Battleground, Texas, I got videos of them saying they're going to bring in these immigrant populations, put them in Democratic and Liberal Party homes, get them on welfare, get them driver's license, get them voting, and then it's game over. They're taking our guns. They're raising taxes to 80% like France because the elites are exempt and get away with it, just like the French socialist. Then we'll look at Hillary Clinton in deep trouble, the latest on what's happening with Donald Trump. Uh, and I got a clip of Obama coming out and, and, and saying that guns are worse than terrorism. What about all the ISIS you've been funding that have killed 300,000 people, Obama? That's all coming up. Now, before we go any further, I want to tell you about our guest, Peter Schiff, Europac.com. He's an American businessman, investment broker, author, and financial commentator. Of course, you see him on a lot of the big shows, usually as the guy they're attacking. Uh, he uh, also, of course, is a best-selling author. Again, Europac.com, Billions Under Management. And he's got a really accurate track record. I give him about a 95% accuracy uh, in his predictions. Uh, and he has now accurately predicted some of the problems we'd see start unraveling. So we'll cover the waterfront with him in the next 50 minutes or so. Uh, but I've thrown a lot out there in the last five minutes, Peter Schiff. What do you want to tackle first? Well, you know, I'm out here in Jackson Hole right now. You know, the Federal Reserve has its annual conference here. And I am taking part in a kind of like a protest conference. You know, there's a left wing group that's here, too, called Fed Up. And they're they basically think the Fed has to print even more money that they haven't done enough. They want even higher inflation. <laughs> well, I'm part of a conference that's criticizing the Fed from from the other perspective, from the right, uh, talking about all the damage that the Federal Reserve has already done uh, to the U.S. economy. In fact, the declines that we're seeing now in the stock market are not the result of what's happening in China. It's that we're coming closer to the time where everybody believed the Fed was about to raise interest rates. And so the phony bubble economy that was inflated with cheap money, uh, the Fed was threatening to prick that bubble. And so that's why the market was coming down. But now we're starting to hear rumblings here out of Jackson Hole that maybe some more QE is coming after all that maybe the Fed isn't going to be raising rates, which is what I've been saying the, the entire time, that the Fed is too committed to keep... Yeah, you said two years ago they're never going to stop QE because it's it's the lesser of two evils in their view. Well, in their view, it's actually the greater of the evils, but from their perspective, it keeps the bubble from collapsing now. It pushes the pain uh, into the future, but in the present, the pain is still being felt on Main Street, even as its monetary policy keeps people on Wall Street immune. But I'm going to really be criticizing. I'm giving a keynote speech at this conference here in a, in a couple of hours, and I'm really going to be talking about the damage that the Fed has done. And I'm also going to be criticizing Janet Yellen. And, you know, I would encourage your uh, listeners to go to my YouTube channel, uh, at, at Shift Report, and look at the video, Janet Yellen Exposed. I did this 40-minute video when they first appointed her to chair the Federal Reserve. And if you remember, at that time, uh, President Obama introduced her as the woman who warned about the financial crisis, right? She warned about the housing bubble uh, in advance, and, and nobody listened to her. And that's why we need her at the helm, because, you know, if she was there, then we wouldn't have had the crisis. The media bought that. It was a complete and total lie. I take that lie apart in my video, Janet Yellen Exposed, because I go back to the very speeches that she was giving in 2005 and 2006, where everybody says she was warning about the problems and she did no such thing. The only time Janet Yellen ever mentioned the housing bubble was to say that we didn't have one, to criticize people who thought there was a housing bubble. Janet Yellen in 2005 said she thought housing prices would keep going up 
She thought that they might go up more slowly than they had in the past. Well, sure, she's part of the whole inner fall. circle that pushed this whole thing. What about this? There's a major split for the first time in modern history from what I've seen in the Federal Reserve with the Kansas City and the Dallas Fed pretty much sounding like you uh, and warning this is going to bring the entire country and the economy down. Uh, so maybe that's why Janet Yellen and a few of the New York Fed kingpins didn't show up USA Today is reporting. Yeah, well, Janet Yellen is not here, and normally she is here. I don't know why she skipped it uh, this year. But look, there are some people who think that the Fed should raise rates, that it's time and the economy can, can do well with higher rates. There are those that think that the Fed needs more, you know, to keep rates at zero because the economy needs more support. Both camps are wrong. They're both wrong. We need to raise interest rates, but that's going to cause the economy to implode. But we have to implode it anyway because it's a bubble. Until we let this bubble pop and until we finish the financial crisis that we started in 2008, we're never going to have a real recovery. That's right. But they want to keep picking the winners, so they want to keep the bubble going forever, even though the bubble is eating the world. Yes, the bubble is the problem. So we have to end the stimulus so the market can solve the problems that the Fed is continuing to cause with its reckless monetary policy. Unfortunately, though, I think this policy is going to continue, uh, and ultimately, it's going to destroy the dollar. And, you know, the Chinese, you talked about, hey, they're starting to sell some treasuries. Well, they got a lot more treasuries to sell. The whole world has got treasuries to sell. Who's going to buy them? And you've it's always said when they start selling the treasuries and everybody else jumps on the bandwagon, that could be the end of the dollar. Well, the, look, who's going to buy all these treasuries that everybody wants to unload? The Fed is the only buyer in town. And where are they going to get the money? They're going to print it. And so what's that money going to be worth after they print it by, you know, the truckload? Not very much, which is why people have to do something. I've talked about on your show before. Take advantage of this suckers rally in the dollar and sell your dollars to the suckers. You know, that's what we're doing it with my clients at Europe Pacific Capital. We're helping them buy assets in Switzerland and New Zealand and Singapore and other countries that are in much better shape. But their assets are on sale because the dollar has gone up because a bunch of idiot currency speculators have no idea what's about to happen and take advantage of their ignorance uh, by buying these foreign assets and precious metals. So gold is just starting to rise now. It's up back above you know, 1130, 1140. It was down at about 1080. So it's just starting to go up. But this is just the beginning. When people realize that the Fed isn't finished printing money, that it's just getting warmed up that the real printing is yet to come, gold prices are going to be much, much higher, and people should be buying their gold now before sure. the price. I mean, is it, we're going to go to break, but here's the question. Answer when we come back. Peter Schiff's our guest, Europe Pacific Capital. I'm Alex Jones. We're talking about the worldwide meltdown that's happening. If this signals people starting to move away from the dollar, then will it get to anything like we saw Weimar Republic if they decide to start buying their own debt. I mean, they've already been doing it, but if it accelerates, how bad could it get? If you go to DrudgeReport.com, you can see two InfoWars articles that are very important. One of them I'm going to ask Peter Schiff about in a moment. The Financial Times of London calls for abolishing cash. And we see huge pushes by the private central banks, by the big five banks, to get rid of cash because then they can take whatever they want out of our bank accounts. They can track everything we do. It is such a bad idea, and it ties into these banker bail-ins, the grabbing of people's money uh, in Greece and Cyprus and other areas. They're starting to talk about doing this here. So we should go over with Peter Schiff historically what happens once currency start really being devalued, because it's, it's going to happen. The question is, how is it going to happen? What will it look like? So that's a segue into my question uh, this sounds like that we're going to at least have devaluations of the dollar down the road, similar to what we've seen with Mexican peso. Could it go as bad as Weimar Germany or Zimbabwe uh, situation? Because the numbers, correct me if I'm wrong, historically, we've already devalued the dollar more than they have their currencies historically. It's just that people are still ex accepting it on our faith and credit. Yeah, you know, a Weimar Republic situation, that's always the worst case scenario. I mean, I don't know if it's the most probable. In fact, I don't think it's the most likely scenario. I don't think the dollar is going to be worthless. 
But I do believe it's going to be worth a lot less than it is now. You know, uh, there was an expression 